Caddis Maximus here. Might as well do a quick review of the Ubiquitous Bic Lighter. These have been around since the 1970s, and contrary to popular belief, these days these are known as the premium lighters over the cheaper lighters, but these were actually sold in, as a cheap alternative in the 70s to what lighters were available. And what is also interesting is the retail price was around $1.50 in the 1970s, and that's about the same price as they are today. Never liked these stickers. You know, try to slowly peel them off. You can usually get them apart. So these lighters are made in France. They're manufactured in the United States, and I'm not sure what other countries that they're made in. They used to actually ship them back and forth. So some of the French-made ones will be in the United States, and some of the U.S. ones would be uh, put you know, elsewhere around the world. Apparently, these are sold in 160 countries. We can see that these are, if I can get it in just the right light, U.S. made. So for a long time, they were manually adjusting. They just had a gear wheel, and for at least a while, they were collectible. I don't know if they still are. And then they uh, invented the automatic adjusting valve, which actually worked pretty well. And they've been like that for ever since. The big deal about the BIC was the 3000 lights. Of course, the number of lights is variable, but one deal is BIC does put in a really extra long flint. The flint is much longer than the amount of fuel that's put in them. As far as the fuel, they actually have a special nozzle that fills it up and then it has actually like a nozzle and a little probe inside the nozzle. So it fills it up and then it jams a ball bearing in there. Uh, so that's why they're not really refillable. You can refill them, but it's it's kind of some weird hacks. But nonetheless, that's uh, how they are. So besides the uh, sticker, they have the child safety, which is just a spring uh, steel spring. That just makes it more difficult to operate the wheel. Many times I use the lighters for like shrink tubing. Is they for some reason have made it? I mean, it's a pretty effective child safety, but it's really easy to. Just pop that little thing out, and then it works like a normal lighter. These are great to have in a first aid kit, an emergency kit. They're a very effective and reliable way to start a fire. <laughs> That's the purpose. But they can be used for shrink tubing. And even a little tip is if you put the shrink tubing in the orange part of the flame, you get this uh, charring. But if you put the shrink tube in the blue part of the flame, like so, you don't get any charring. So that's one of the secrets of using a lighter for shrink tubing and it works pretty well. So let me go and knock one down just for the heck of it here. They're actually pretty easy to take apart. I just use a, a pick here and you just wanna get the little steel cover off. Actually, let me zoom in. Here we are, let's get this little cover off. And it's actually a pretty rigid. These big lighters have they are a very strong design with a center ridge. I believe they're made out of polycarbonate. Definitely a pretty tough design. There's some really cheap lighters that just aren't very safe. This one's definitely had quite a bit of use. And uh, we'll just go ahead and pop the wheel out. Even if they seem empty, there's always a little bit of gas in there. So you have to be careful of that. We'll go ahead and drop out the flint. And you can see how long this spring is. It is a super duper long spring. It's almost two inches almost two inches long it's pretty surprising and this lighter is nearly empty and there's still quite a big uh, piece of flint in there of course the uh, thumb wheel is die cast zinc it's actually two piece there's the solid piece then there's a little pressed on collar this is a wound piece of carbon steel with ridges it's basically like a little file that's wrapped around like a spring they slide that over that cast piece of zinc and then they press on the other side of the wheel so that's how they make the wheel. And then what we have left is our valve and our thumb switch. Let me go ahead and pull those out. Well, I can see some of the things, even versus the early auto automatically adjusting ones, uh, is now the valve is actually just press fit into the plastic. So it makes it smaller and uh, even cheaper. And the other thing is there's these two little notches here. So when they put on the uh, thumb, the valve, it actually is crimped around the edge. So I suppose it's actually pretty good because it makes it nice and reliable, but you can't really disassemble them. But we do see that it is a plastic switch, but then at least a metal cast zinc lever in there. 
So one of the things that makes them reliable and be able to sustain being dropped. Anyway, I figured I'd do a review of these ubiquitous Bic lighters. They have their mini ones and, you know, some other variations. They have all these different colors and all these that are shrink-wrapped. It's actually kind of surprising. Apparently, some of the numbers are pretty crazy, around 35 billion sold. Obviously, a lot less people smoke and do that kind of stuff. So uh, a lot less lighters are sold now than they used to be. And there's like a Bic lighter app for people who go to concerts because... Not very many people actually have lighters. I mean, they may not even allow them at concerts anymore. Uh, so I think that's a bit hilarious. But nonetheless, uh, at one point at least, they used to sell 5 million plus of these things every single day. Pretty wild. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.